Hello, good day. I'm Ronaldo Esison. I'm presently the president of the Association of Structural Engineers of the Philippines. Today, I'm going to discuss with you uh, what the Association of Structural Engineers of the Philippines is and the present National Structural Code of the Philippines, 7th edition, 2015. The ASEP is the premier structural engineering organization in the Philippines. It was established in 1961 and it's now about 59 years old. It has more than 600 members who are all practicing civil structural engineers. Our members uh, come from the Philippines and there are some members who are out of the country at this time. But uh, all our members are Filipino uh, civil engineers. No? So the, the, the members in the ASEP are graded into three grades. No? You have the fellow, the regular, and the associate members. So the associate members are normally those who are just started their practice in structural engineering. Uh, they have at least about three years of continuous practice. And then you have the regular members who have at least five years. And then we have our esteemed members who are the fellows. So they, are, they have been practicing for a long time. And as a fellow, uh, a minimum requirement is you have to be distinguished in your practice and you have to be at least 40 years old. In 2014, uh, members of the Association of the ASEP uh, formed the Institution of Specialist Structure and Fields of the Philippines. So this institution is composed of uh, ASEP members and uh, PICE accredited specialist members. So basically the, the ESEP is under ASEP, but the, they can do their own programs uh, of their own uh, and they can assist or help ASEP in some of the programs of the association. Like, for example, the ESEP uh, prepared for the Structural Engineers of the Philippines um, the Manual of Practice of uh, Structural Engineering. The ASEP's primary objective is to advance the practice of structural engineering in the Philippines. So it has become a proactive voice in the development of codes and standards. So in fact, we have uh, been involved in various agencies all over in the all over the country uh, government agencies and we're helping them in terms of um, public safety like uh, the DTI the DPWH the DOH and other government agencies so for nearly five decades uh, since about 1970s the asset has been the developer and author of the NSCP so it is recognized by the DPWH, who is the uh, building official, and is recognized as the referral code to the National Building Code for the social design of buildings. The present programs of the ASEP includes the uh, development of the new NSCP 8 edition. Uh, this NSCP 8 edition will make us migrate from the uh, existing reference of UBC 1997 to the ASCE 7-10 provisions for earthquake. It will also be adopting the latest uh, reference international codes like the ACI 31819. The ASEP is also developing the Philippine Spectral Acceleration Map together with VBOX, which will be used for the new NSCP 8 edition. Aside from that, we're also developing at present a uh, various design manuals like the RCD 101, the Rate Force Cochrane Design Manual, the Structural Dating Manual for RC and Steel, as well as the new Seismic Design Manual. In the ASEP, we also have programs which are geared towards volunteerism and research and development. Like for example, we have the Disaster Mitigation Preparedness and Response Program. This program is a long-running program of ASEP wherein the ASEP provides uh, volunteers for building inspection after an earthquake. Like in the recent December 2019 earthquake, the ASEP had provided uh, our members to the building officials as well as the local government units inspecting various damaged structures in Mindanao. We are also part of uh, the committees of various government agencies uh, like the DTI, the DPWH, the DOH, or DepEd, wherein our members provides inputs to the committees or 
of these agencies uh, in ensuring public safety. In our Committee for Research and Development, we are now looking into the use of bamboo as a structural material. Also, this committee went into research to determine the effects of uh, cyclic loading on QTMT rivers. We are also looking into amending the instrumentation uh, regulations for buildings and the R&D committee is developing the new guidelines for building instrumentation. So let's now look at the NSCP and what a social code is. A social code is a set of rules, provisions, and standards for social designers to use as a guide in the design, detailing, and construction of a structure. These are sets of minimum requirements in the design and detailing of these structures to provide the minimum requirement of the code, which is life safety. The NSCP now is in its seventh edition. The first edition was published in 1972 and the second edition in 1982. Note that then the code was uh, called the National Structural Code for Buildings. In 1987, we shifted uh, to name the code to the National Structural Code of the Philippines. So the third edition, 1987, was the first book to bear the name of NSCP. Subsequently, we have uh, other editions like the 1992 fourth edition, the 2001 fifth edition, and the 2010 sixth edition. As, as I've said, the present edition is the 2015 NSCP. The NSCP 2015 uh, was approved in April of 2017. So effectively, the effectivity of the NCP 2015 is in 2017. This was approved by then Secretary Rogelio Singson of the DPWH, making the NCP 2015 the new referral code of the National Building Code. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen it, this is the picture of the new NSCP 2015. This uh, NSCP 2015 uh, is developed by the Codes Committee of the Asset, and as I've said, was approved by the DPWH in 2017. One of the one of the major um, additions to the NSCP 2015 is to is the updated earthquake code provisions. Uh, and uh, active fault maps of the Philippines. This new NSCP 2015 already includes the West Bohol fault, uh, which was uh, triggered in an earthquake uh, in Bohol in 2013. Also, the NSCP 2015 include wind load provisions based on, based on ASC 7-10 and our locally developed wind control maps for the entire Philippine archipelago. So why is there a need to update? ASEP has been the sole developer author uh, recognized by the Department of Public Works and Highways of the National Social Code of Philippines, or the NSCP. This is the referral code of the National Building Code for Social Design. Since 2010, our country has experienced numerous natural disasters affecting our building structures, like the Typhoon Ondoy, which is about 160 km per hour, Typhoon Pepeng, which is about 250 km per hour, Typhoon Juan, 295 km per hour, Pedrin, 215 km per hour, and a number of our major earthquakes, like the Negros Occidental Earthquake, which has a magnitude of 6.7, and the Bohol earthquake, which has a magnitude of magnitude 7.2. So we need to keep the NSC updated with the new findings born out of research and experiences from these previous disasters for us to be able to keep up with the requirements of the present code. The 2015 NSCP has uh, seven chapters. Uh, chapter one is general requirements. Uh, chapter two is loads and actions. Chapter three is earthworks and foundation. Chapter four is structural concrete. Chapter five is structural steel. 
chapter 6 is wood and chapter 7 is masonry. We have also included appendices to guide our practitioners in design peer review and building instrumentation. As I've said earlier, one of the few changes in the NSAP 2015 from the 2010 would be the development of the basic wind speed and the new wind hazard map. Uh, based on the studies of our codes committee on wind, uh, we have developed the various uh, maps uh, for basic wind speeds for different categories of buildings, category one, two, and three. So this map would show you the different uh, wind speeds for these different categories. It is good to note very well that uh, with the revisions in the basic wind hazard and wind hazard maps, the load combinations for load resistance factor design as well as the strength design for RC would be changed uh, in terms of load factors. Please note that for uh, equations three, four, and six, the load factors of 0 0.8, 1.6, and 1.6 in 2010 will be changed in the NCP 2015. So in 2015, with the new basic wind speeds, the equations uh, three, Four and six, as I've said, uh, the load factors for wind will be changed from 0.5, 1, and 1. So it is good for us to keep this in mind very well so that we will not be overloading our structures when designing for wind. In NSCP 2015, we have also revised some provisions in the determination of the static design base shear. We have revised the new source factors to include distances less than 2 kilometers in the determination of the CACV values and the NA and NV values. This uh, revision uh, would, pro would provide a higher earthquake force for structures less than two kilometers from a boat. Here, we have also revised the boundary limits of seismic source type A. However, the calculations or the formula for the determination of this design base shear remains the same for NCP 2015. Note that equations 208-9, 208-10, 208-11 and 208-12 remains the same. However, in the determination of the NA and NV values as well as the CA and CV values, you would notice the distinct changes between NSCP 2010 and 2015. Uh, please note that in NSCP 2010, we don't have any value for structures less than two kilometers but in NSCP 2015 you will note that we have added a less than two kilometer criteria in our NA and V values and this shows that there is a significant increase from 1.2 to 1.5 of a seismic source type A uh, fault and a structure being less than two kilometers from it. Note that uh, as an example, the NA value for a structure in 2010, which is less than 2 kilometers, would be 1.2. But in 2015, the NA value for a structure less than 2 kilometers would be 1.5. And this will also affect your CA and CV values in determining your standard design base. I would like to show you how you can use the NCP in our structural design process. After obtaining the architectural plans, we prepared the structural model. In the structural model, we visualize how we intend to design the structure of the building by providing the framing plans as well as the locations of our beams and columns, slabs, and foundation. After determining uh, these initial conditions, we prepare our design criteria. 
And the design criteria includes our loading for gravity, wind, and seismic forces. In the determination of this uh, gravity, earthquake, and wind loadings, we refer to Chapter 2 of the NSCP. So during our design process, uh, we will be referring to the Chapter 3 of the NSCP, determining the requirements for soil investigations and bearing capacity requirement. Subsequently, in the design of the individual members, we will be using the various chapters in the NSCP for the different materials that we will be using for the building. For reinforced concrete, we use Chapter 4. For saxo steel, we use Chapter 5. And if we're going to design a wooden structure, we, we look at Chapter 6 requirements. And for masonry structures, load-bearing masonry structures, we look into Chapter 7. For this presentation, we tackled only the general requirements of the code as well as the different uh, provisions of the NSCP. But in future presentations, we'll be going to the details of each and every chapters of the NSCP. I would like to enjoin everybody to learn and be knowledgeable of the provisions and the requirements of the NSCP in the design and construction of our buildings. In ASEP, we found many damages in buildings caused by neglect of the provisions of the code, as well as poor construction materials. We believe that following the code saves lives. Now, I would like to take this opportunity for students listening who are interested in such engineering to be future members of ASEP. Likewise, I would like to invite fellow practitioners to join ASEP and be part in the development of structural engineering in the country. Thank you very much for listening.